I first joined the Navy in January 1958 when I just turned 17 years old. And I enlisted for four years, became a sonarman, served on uh, two destroyers, uh, the Wiltsey and Edmonds. Then I went to shore duty in uh, Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey. Been two years there, went back to sea, was on uh, USS Vance, the ER-387 out of Pearl, and then I went to the USS Cunningham out of Long Beach. And that took me up to the end of my second enlistment in 10 years. And this is a, kind of a story in itself, is I, I was the only sonarman on swift boats. And the reason being is they didn't, didn't have an opening for, for uh, sonarman on swift boats. And it was a critical rate, and they kept saying, no, you can't go to swift boats. So how I did is my XO on the Cunningham says, well, you're enlisting this up. He said, once you extend for a year, extend for swift boats. And that's what I did. So my next year, and this was in uh, January of 68, went, got my orders, extended year, got my orders, went to Swift School in Coronado. I took the position of the quartermaster, the LPO, got my crew, and I wound up in Antoy, Vietnam in March of 1968. March 68 to March 69, we had, me and my crew, we had the 94 boat for most of that time. And uh, we got to start doing the usual operations and started doing river operations in pretty much basically in September. Some of the boats started sticking their noses into the river. And in October, we got into it big time. In that period of time, we started going on more and more river operations than the coastal, doing the operation of sea lords. And we started running into rivers and engaging the enemy, you know, pretty, pretty often. That's when boats started getting shot up, things started happening, and our, my 94 boat got clobbered in, uh, I think it was November, yeah, or December, because we had to take her in to get everything repaired, we took her to Cat Low, and of course, we had to lose her. But we went back to Antoy and we started riding different boats. And this went on pretty much until I left in March of 68. Rode different boats. I was on 43 boat for a good period of time, which I consider my second boat, and the 50 boat, and then at other times I rode others. But main thing from October 68 till so I left in uh, March 69, we were doing mostly river ops, different places. We were engaging the enemy and doing what I, reason I wanted to go to Swiss is I didn't want to be sick, you know, 10 miles out on the destroyer. I wanted to be in where the action was. First time we got hit by a rocket, that wasn't bad. Uh, that was in, I was riding the 36 boat. And I think my officer was here earlier. He told you a story about we, uh, had shot out a Viet Cong flag because you never went in and you picked up a Viet Cong flag out of the ground. You just didn't because one of the boats when they first went there did that and got blown up, booby trap. So we were going past in the Biop River and we were making gunnery runs on these bunkers and they had the, the flags and everything. One of them got hit with a fifth caliber round and went in the river, it was floating down the river, so we grabbed it. And one of my crew had the bright idea, let's put that sucker up and on the antenna and go, when we're coming around, they'll see that we got them. You know? Well, that worked for a while. We went up the river, shot up some more positions. As we were coming out, almost out of the river, heading back to the Coast Guard cutter, which we were operating from, and bam, <laughs> P-40 rocket. Went in one side, went through the boat, and detonated on the other side as it went out. And I, it knocked me colder in the mackerel. I don't even remember anything after that. It's, everything was pretty much, uh, besides me doing your usual patrols, which you had to keep continue on the coastal, then when uh, ComNav4B or whoever was in charge would have an operation, they would take, like we never went in with just one boat by ourselves in the rivers. The Kowloon River run we did several times. The Biop was real famous for that. That was a, 
canal or river right up by the Cambodian border and we used to go up there down the rock jaw. There were just several and it was just, you would sit out there and they'd say, okay, we've got an operation tomorrow. We're going to have the, the you know, 50, 43, 94, 36 boats. You guys get ready, get ready to leave. And we'd go out, we'd either go to an LST or Coast Guard cutter, which was usually a couple miles out and they would be at the mouth of whichever river or place we were going. We get, they would go for their briefings, our officers, we'd get the boats ready, and then boom, we'd head in. And, uh, we operated with, uh, we took uh, Vietnamese, rough puffs, we would take them with us, we started taking them, and grabbing, putting a bunch on the boats, we'd go on an operation, put them on the beach, go up, support them and pick them up. We did some things with some uh, other uh, forces, like I remember one period we had some mercenaries that we took in and nobody knew exactly what that was about, but we took them in, they did their thing, we picked them up. And uh, that was a, that was kind of hairy because we took them in at night and we had to nose, there was four boats, we nosed into some pretty heavily uh, forested area. It's pitch black, mosquito, you know, everything. And we nosed in and they took left and we had to sit there and wait for them. Of course, everybody sitting there and we were hearing noises and everything, but actually nothing happened that night. We, they did their thing for whatever they were doing, came back to the boat and we took them out. And the opposite of that is you'd go in on a up and all of a sudden both sides of the banks would open up automatic weapons, rockets. And at first we used to surprise them because they weren't expecting us coming in. But in later operations they started setting cute little traps. So if things got where we were doing one thing to try to overcome what they were doing to us. So it got pretty dicey in places, but we always managed to do our job. I was on small ships, the swords. I wasn't on carriers or big ships and we had small crews, considering the ship, you know, he called 250 guys small crew, which is pretty tight knit. And we were pretty tight, you know, but it was 250 guys on a small ship, and most of the time you're, you know, some of the guys you don't know the others. But on a swift boat, there's only five of us and our officer, and that's it. And when, like I say, when I, we went to train, we became a crew, five of our officers, six of us. We went through everything together. Everybody learned each other's jobs. When we started doing the job we were doing in Vietnam, it was to patrol off the coast and stop, you know, uh, supplies and things. And just a couple months after we got in there, we decided we wanted to fight this war because that wasn't doing anything. So we learned by doing. And a lot of the things that we learned the hard way, right now the Navy is training guys. And, and the crews of the small boat people now, they're very well trained, they're very good at what they do.